x to it. Now, the default configuration will send the MS chap credentials for the logged in user. So this is exactly what you would get. Right now, the user may believe he's connecting to the corporate AP, right? How does all that signal strength work where you can force it to connect to your AP rather than the corporate one? Watch the videos. We could do it with a deauth attack, higher signal strength, boost the signal strength up for the card, and that would actually allow it to connect to it. So, just kind of going a couple of seconds back. Right, so the user has entered the credentials, and if any of you use Peep with Windows, this is something you would encounter when you try to log in. If you don't encounter this, what that means is your administrator has configured your client for automatic connection, which is as soon as the client detects that it is connected to the SSID of the corporate network, it will auto send the credentials. It will not prompt you anymore, right? Which is, which is even more worse, because this could be happening at an airport. At least when you see a prompt of a network, which should not belong in the same wireless vicinity, you at least have a chance of not entering anything here. Right? And the reason people have already done the whole auto-connect thing is because just to facilitate you know, a seamless transition into the wireless network. Now, the moment you enter the credentials, our Honeypot Radius server receives all of that. Uh, user name is actually out in the open, which you can even find just by sniffing the traffic. And this is the MS Chap challenge response. Anyone familiar with MS Chap? Microsoft Challenge Response Protocol? Ever heard of it? Anyone? Okay. So, MS Chap is a simple challenge response protocol, and like all challenge response protocols, right, you could run brute force dictionary attacks, whatever you want on it. Uh, you could even play around with a subset of rainbow tables. There are a couple of attacks in which you can use a mixture of rainbow tables along with MS Chap. And this is something which has been on the land side for probably 15 years, 17 years, right? So cracking MS Chap V2 or MS Chap uh, is a problem which has been solved quite reliably. Now, on backtrack, you could simply use a tool called AS Leap, providing it with the appropriate dictionary file or with some modifications with the rainbow tables locally or in the cloud. Once you do that, it just goes through the plain vanilla MS chap cracking process, right? It's showing you the whole config. Let's go forward, right? You just need to take the challenge response, point it to the right tables, and right. It will crack the password for you. Now, why is peep cracking in my mind easier than cracking WPA PSK? Right? So, here's a quick hint. Who sets up the passphrase for WPA PSK? Your network administrator, right? As far as these credentials are concerned, these are per user, username and passwords which you have to enter when you have to log into a PEEP network. Which means, for a given enterprise network, if you create a honeypot in the vicinity, you would actually capture multiple usernames and passwords for different users whose machines are connecting to you if you have higher signal strength. What that means is the surface area of attack or the number of options available to you to crack MS Chap V2 is much more. Second, if you compare different users, the larger the enterprise, the higher the probability one of the users may have a weaker password. Sorry? Weaker password. Excellent, right? A weaker password. And this is something you can even try uh, on your own office network, right? All you need is to set up the Honeypot AP with the same SSID. It should have higher signal strength. On the videos which you have, which I had given out, there's a specific card which I use called the Alpha card. Anyone has it? A couple of people, right? 
Okay. Got that? Can you just show that, wave that around? Security and hacking with that. D-Link, D-W-A hyphen 125. The card, I think, costs 1,000 bucks. Probably lesser. 600? You should buy it from him. I got a bad deal. Is this card work? Sorry? I mean, uh, would it uh, act as a good alternative to Alpha card? Apart from the power level and the receptivity, right? So, what it would work for is D-Link DWA 125 has the same RT-Link chipset which is there on the Alpha. And the RT-Link chipset is what most of these drivers support, allowing you to do packet sniffing and injection, right? Uh, I'm running out of time, so I'll take the questions later, don't worry about it. Uh, for the next speaker, I'll probably free the podium, but I'll be outside. So, similar to PEEP, you have EAP TTLS. And EAP TTLS, uh, if you want to run that on Windows, you would need a special client. Windows, out of the box, does not support EAP TTLS. Uh, I'm just showing you to you on the Mac. The Mac supports PEEP, EAP TTLS, and a bunch of things as well. The process is exactly the same. EAP TTLS also uses server-side certificates. What we do is create the honeypot, connect to it. This could be the same SSID as your corporate network. And once you enter all of the credentials, the MS chap responses go through. Then it's the same process of using ASLeap or any other utility to crack that. Uh, WPA Enterprise is one of the most misunderstood protocols out there. Most people believe WPA Enterprise is like a panacea to all the problems, right? Like a one-shot silver bullet which will like solve it all. I have WPA Enterprise. That's it. No, it does not. And the misconfigurations possible along with a combination of other attacks like the GTK hole and a couple of things out there you can do replay injections and a bunch of things on WPA networks as well. Right? So we've tried that again. Now, PEEP and EAP TTLS is probably over 95 to 96% of WPA enterprise deployments out there. EAP TTLS, again, server side certificates, allows you optionally to use client side certificates as well. Now, what is the most secure form of wireless security you can use in enterprise today? It's like the concluding remark. Uh, and that is EAP TLS. EAP TLS forces you to use both client and server side certificates. You have no option. The only way you can beat EAP TLS right now is by stealing certificates from the clients. Which means you break into a client, you steal the certificate, you impersonate the client's identity, and you break into the rest of the network. Right? There is MITM and all of that is ruled out. There's a lot of mutual authentication. It uses a bunch of other protocols which you can take offline. Because of which, uh, this is extremely secure. Unfortunately, it is not popular enough simply because of deployment challenges. Anyone here has EAP TLS in their office? You have all three of them? Beep. We have HP we support uh, EAP TLS. Okay. So, yeah, no, not HP. Okay. okay, the old one. So typically most equipment right now, if you buy all the latest stuff, would support all of them. Setting up EAP TLS is not trivial, right? You either need a full local PKI infrastructure, which all the certificate validation and all that can happen, along with some sort of management to distribute all the client-side certificates, which is a nightmare, right? Distributing anything on the client, such as a certificate, is a nightmare increases exponentially as the size of the network. At the very same time, when you want to do things like revoke certificates, a lot of work. Again, reinstallation of certificates, a lot of work. Uh, the solutions out there, most of them try to interface with NAC or network admission control. Proprietary solutions with which you can deploy new certificates on the client with just a single click. Anyway, so the next thing I want to look at is that a little background music for me? They're like, hey, 
Great, the hack just happened. <laughs> so, enterprise rogue APs, backdoors, worms, and botnets, right? Uh, this is the second part of a series of attacks which I was speaking about in a lot of conferences. I showed a lot of demos, and right now, most of the wireless security community is toying with this idea. There are already meta predator scripts out there. Uh, you know, I, I think Nikhil is right now bound by Black Hat. The object doors work. Now, before I actually dive deeper into the details, how much time do I have? Uh, you have used wireless network. How your typical Windows machine looks like. You connect, it pops up that little annoying bubble at the bottom which says, hey, wireless network detected, or connected to X, Y, uh, Z network. Now, how many of you have played around with the command line options in Windows for what? Select any one of these networks, you connect to it, right? Now, Windows also allows you for command line option to a lot of wireless config options, which are quite interesting to see. So let me show you some, show you some of them. Now, this is exactly what you would do if you want to look at a list of networks. So on Windows, uh, if you want to look at all the available interfaces, wireless interfaces, you would run this little command. Right? NetSH WLAN show interfaces. This would show you all. Am I running out of time? Okay. You're giving me that unusual little stare, which is like, finish fast, the next speaker is breathing down my neck. Okay, no, I don't mean how to hide. <laughs> uh, just kidding. So, Wireless LAN connection, right? List of all the interfaces, both the inbuilt as well as external cards. Now, if you want to look at more information about what your card supports, you can just do a NetSH WLAN show drivers. Right? And you see a bunch of options. Now, quick question. You know, I think at least some of you are thinking, what's the point of all of this, you know? But I'm happy to just click and connect, right? Why go through all of this? Now, let me ask you a question. If you break into a box with Metasploit, right, how many of you have ever gotten a Metapredator shell? Right? Okay. Then, have you done anything for wireless remotely? No. No, no, Nothing, no. right? I mean, you've done tons of stuff for the wired side, I'm sure, like, like pivoting and port forwarding and whatnot. What about wireless? So this will also give you some initial info about if you break into a computer remotely, what can you do with the wireless settings and the wireless networks around? Now, taking this forward, if I want to mimic this same functionality, which is show me a list of all available networks, all I need to do is net sh wlan show networks. This is the same list of networks which you saw when you did that little right click down there. So the command line access is just as powerful. Now once you connect to a network, if you remember, this gets added to a new profile, right? So we go to this part, look at adapter settings. Probably then it's going to be spot a later. Right? So, and the next time you connect to the same network, do you notice you automatically connect to it? You just open up your laptop, your back home, you connect, right? Now, if I were a hacker, I have remotely broken in, how can I inspect all those profiles? Right? You have a metaprinter access, and uh, people who probably haven't used Metasploit. Uh, just a quick fill-in, Metasploit is a framework by which you can do vulnerability assessment, exploit research, write signatures for IDSs, a bunch of things. Metapreter is actually a little program, more correctly a server-side DLL, which runs in memory on the victim and allows the hacker to interface with it remotely to send commands, view configurations, modify configurations and whatnot. So it's like a little backdoor access. However, that backdoor access is command line. 
right? Though you can of course export a VNC shell and do a bunch of things, but most of the times all you have is command line access. So if you want to look at all the profiles, just do a quick show profiles. Typically, a profile has the same name as the SSID of the network you've connected to, right? Rule of thumb. Unless you specifically take the pains of going and modifying that. Now, if I want to look quickly at what's there in a profile, I just need to do name is equals Vivek. Quickly, can someone tell me what is the encryption? Anyone? WPA personal. What's the security key? What's the security key? What's the passphrase? Why? I mean, okay, here, here's the question back at you. Prove why present is not the WPA PSK key. Fair enough? I mean, can't present be a passphrase? Why not? I mean, sorry? Okay, fair enough. I mean, that's that's the second level part, which is let's assume this was the clear text passphrase, right? My question to you is if this was still the clear text passphrase, is this the passphrase? Sorry? No, 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 you're very close. Go ahead. Okay, it actually needs to be between 8 to 63. Very good. WPA passphrases need to be between 8 to 63 characters, right? Now, here is the thing. I've broken in remotely. I have shell access. Hello? Or one of you broken in remotely. You have shell access to my computer. They're like, okay, pawn this guy bad, right? He's been promoting stuff left and right. Pawn him. And then the next thing is, you know, I need to find his WPA key so I can break into his home network. And have some more fun, right? And then post all that somewhere online. So that should be encrypted, right? Here's the funny thing. Windows 7 onwards, they have this, with the latest patches, they have this little additional option which says key is equal to clear, right? And that just gives you the clear passphrase, all decrypted and shown to you. Which means if you have two minutes on your friend's Windows 7 laptop, right, you could actually get the WPA passphrase out. It's no longer a secret. Right? And of course, you can do this remotely as well. Now, here comes the next part which is more interesting. I've gone through all of these stuff. Right, uh, because we don't have much time. If now you wanted to connect to the network via command line, you just have to write net SS WLAN connect name is equal to Vivek. It will automatically connect to the network just as if you clicked the button on the right hand side which said connect in the UI, right? I leave that as an exercise to you. That's something you can try out later. So where am I getting to with all of this? The command line is pretty powerful. That's what most people don't realize. And this is the next part of the enterprise attack which is PPAP, TTLS, etc. What I'm going to move to is rogue devices. How many of you have created an access point on Linux? using Airbase NG and all of that, okay? Right, on Windows, right, doesn't exist. You just have a client-side interface on Windows, right? How do you create an API with it? Does it make sense? <laughs> <laughs> because you were there in my last talk, acknowledge that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. It done a, did a bunch of things for you. However, natively, it was not there. Wrong. 
it's been there since the last one and a half years to two years. You can create an access point on your Windows 7 laptop with just your inbuilt card. You just don't know the feature ever existed. For some reason, Microsoft never publicized it. Right? And the feature is called the hosted network feature. Now, I've kind of quoted that verbatim from the MSD inside. Let me read it out to you. It has a lot of repercussions. It says, with this feature, a Windows computer can use a single physical wireless adapter, which means just your inbuilt card or your external one, to connect as a client to a hardware access point, which means my wireless card can now connect to an Office AP, right? Here is where it gets interesting. While at the same time, acting as a software AP, allowing other wireless capable devices to connect to it. Right? Which means you can create an access point while you are still connected with the same wireless card to your office access point. And this little AP on your Windows 7 machine allows all other devices to connect to it, tunnel through that connection and access your <coughs> any network you are connected. Can anyone tell me why? Why did they create this? Uh, no, maybe not. Because if you want your devices to connect to it as well, which means all of you are pretty close, right? No. It's very... Okay. How many of you have a mobile phone, an I, uh, a tablet, you know, a laptop and all of that and take that along with you wherever you go? A couple of you at least. At least a mobile phone. And, yeah. Now, when you go to most of these places, uh, like hotspots, 